Hello everyone, I am Chimmy Joe. Uh, welcome to Chimmy Joe Gaming if you haven't been here before. Um, this is What Remains of Edith Finch. It's a walking simulator, it tells a great story. I recorded it once and, well, the, uh, the sound didn't record for the game. And it's kind of important. Um, but uh, I just figured I'd want to share it with you guys. I enjoyed the story quite a bit. It's a very pretty game. And uh, very outlandish kind of story for uh, just a family, you know. It's it's kind of cool. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. And uh, there's a I lot more. Until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. There's a lot more effects when you have this, these uh, settings on ultra, but uh, my recording would uh, drop to like 30, 20 frame rates a second, and uh, I, I just, I wanted to have you guys experience this as much as possible. Um, and nobody likes a jumpy frame rate. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. Well, even when the settings turned down, it's still a little jumpy. Sorry about that. But it's it is a very pretty game. Even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something, but never do. Except for the frogs. So there's actually two paths to come here. You can take the road, or, like, this is the road. Um, or the the path to through the forest. No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. Yeah, um, the uh, story is triggered by where you are. Oh, oh. Yeah. This game is extremely graphic intensive for. Uh, for all the settings that I've even turned down trying to have you have a good experience, but oh man. Okay. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. soundtrack is also child, really nice here. The house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. So I went in the side door last time and it makes you crawl through it. I didn't go this way. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. 
Oh. Well. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Huh. Yeah, apparently I missed a couple of things when I played through the last time. I asked Edie once about the dragon in the pond. She said it had killed her husband. I was six. It seemed like an odd joke to me, even then. Hmm. Yeah, it tells about that later. But, yeah, I, I didn't even notice that before. I guess I should have uh, walked around more. Oh. No, that, never mind. That just goes back to the road. Gotta go this way. through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. <laughs> the power had been turned off the night we left. I really For like... The first time in years. I really like the way this is, uh, this is told. I've never actually played a walking simulator thing before, so... I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. <laughs> Except our cat, Molly. Apple pie. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. Makes sense. Depending on how far the drive is. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Oh. Uh, it was told a little out of order, like, um, about the table rather than the nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. It just sounds creepy. Smile without any teeth. Or too many teeth. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Mm, how? There we go. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. And then there's these little peepholes to all the rooms that Edie are boarded up. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Which is kind of creepy. Why would you bury somebody in the library? My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Um, were there any other peepholes that I missed? I don't think so. I think the rest of them are upstairs. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. Heh. <laughs> oh, I missed that. 
Oh, I never went upstairs, I don't think. Barbara was a child star for two years. Until America grew out of it. Yeah. That tends to happen with child chi uh, children stars, unfortunately. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Okay. Well, I didn't miss much. Let's see. Calvin. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. And Gregory? As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Look at that pink and that shag carpet. Oh, Sven and Edith. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. There's a lot of these, uh, like, birthday, death days. It's kind of sad. Like, the, um, the family ends up just dealing with all of the death like this rather than repurposing the, the rooms. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Wait. Oh, she was only 10. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. I've always wanted a house with uh, secret passages. I think that would be really cool. Uh, Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Pretty stained glass. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. And we're in Molly's room, even though they're all boarded up. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. All these rooms are all connected by secret passageways. So. This is where I am going to leave off the first episode. If you are interested in watching the rest of it, I will have more up later. Thank you for watching, and like, comment, and subscribe if you have made it this far. Um, let me know what you think so far. Nothing weird has happened yet, but I assure you that this story gets much weirder. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and come back for more. Bye!